we're going to talk about royalty. Uh, the royal family. Are you a fan of the royal family? <laughs> Not particularly, despite the decor of the room. <laughs> Don't you love a royal baby? Wills and Kate Mug? Meghan and Harry commemorative plate. Oh, <laughs> so a big thing was made when Prince Harry married Meghan Markle because he was marrying a non-royal. And so that was like, oh, marrying a non-royal, how good. And then they looked into uh, Meghan's family tree. Uh, it turned out when they looked into it that she is distantly related to uh, King Edward III which is kind of surprising. And then maybe even more surprising is Kate Middleton, who was also meant to be a non-royal, is distantly related to King Edward III, which means Meghan and Kate are distant cousins. Is that surprising? Well, it turns out lots of people are related to King Edward III. Ellen DeGeneres is related to Edward III. It turns out everyone is related to royalty at some point. Everyone is directly descended from royalty somewhere in their family. And that includes you as well. Well, we can do this quickly, in fact. Everyone has two parents. And then they have two parents. So everyone has four grandparents. Uh, and everyone has eight great-grandparents. And then 16 great-great-grandparents. And you keep doubling this up. If you went back 30 generations, at about a thousand years, you'd end up with, uh, what, over a billion ancestors, direct ancestors. But we all have a billion direct ancestors. So straight away you can see that the family trees, we're not just, we don't just have separate family trees. If we look at our family trees, we are far more connected than you think. We are this connected web of families. In fact, you only have to go back a few generations. If you looked at your, I don't know, great, 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 great grandmother, you can actually find out that she might be your great, 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 great grandmother in more than one way. Which means you don't have 64 great, 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 great grandparents. You have 63 or fewer. But that itself doesn't show that we're all descended from royalty. So we're going to do a little experiment to show you the kind of idea. Because you could argue that royalty is like a special case. Mm, you know, like, they could you know, be, like they're quarantined off. You know? Yeah, they could be their whole separate strand, couldn't they? That's have a look at how we are all connected. What I'm going to do is do a little experiment and I'm going to have uh, a population of, well, let's do a simple thing, six people. Now we're going to work out who their parents are going to be. We're going to go back a generation. So we might go back a generation like this. Three, four, five, six. In fact, I know I'm going to do this a few times. Let me just prepare this. This population down here at the bottom of the page, this is going to be the present day. This is the present generation. Now we're going to work out who their parents are. And I'm going to use dice for this. We're going to start with individual one. And their parents was one and five. Parent one and parent five up here. Let's do this for individual two. Let's work out who their parents are. Strangely, some kind of virgin birth here, but no matter, I'm going to persevere with this. So this has just had one parent, five and five. Okay, let's see what individual two was. Okay, five and six. So, sorry, individual three had parents five and parent six. Over here. Number five's been busy. I know. Yeah, some scandalous story there we're not, we're not uh, privy to. Okay, person four, uh, three and six. So let's do that. Three and six. And person five, okay, six and two. Six and two. And individual six, who are they related to? Six and four. Six and one, two, three, four. Okay. So now I should make a note of who's related to who, actually. So this person is related to one in the present day. This person is related to person five. This person is related to person four in the present day. This person is related to person six. This person, you're right. Person five who's been busy is related to one, two, and three. Person six, three, four, five and six. Okay, I'm going to take this back a generation and see who the grandparents are. Let's do it. This, this is tedious, you know, speed this up, won't you? Let's see who the grandparents are related to in the present day. Person, individual one, is related to all these people 
via this child here, and also related to person five. So that's okay, so that's still three, four, five, and six. This person is also related to three, four, five, and six via this child. This person is related to individual six, and that's it. This person is related to one, two, and three. This person is related to uh, individual four. And I'm gonna take this back another generation. Let's keep going. Okay, now, hmm, something's happened in this generation that didn't happen before. These two people had no kids. They're not related to anyone in the present day. I'm gonna say N for no one. This person had three children. Related to all these people, all those people, and all those people. Now, they've got the set. They have got the set. One, two, three, four, five, six. They are related to everyone in the present day. Mm, that's interesting. What about the other people? This person is related to what? One, two, three, four children, not the full set. This person is related to six, one, two, and three, one again, five. And this person is related to person four. So, We've got someone related to everyone in the present day. This generation, or this individual, is called our most recent common ancestor. This person is the first person, if we all trace our family tree back, it would be the first person who's related to everyone in the present day. I feel real we'll warmth towards them, I think. I know, I know. This is a, a grandparent to all of us. Isn't that nice? That is nice. Let's uh, go a few more generations back. Uh, so we've got five and six. Now this is the person over here who had no kids. Okay, five and six. Let's do it. Five and six. I don't really care who these people are related to, do we? Almost inconsequential. One, I think I'm maybe one generation away. And this is the generation I wanted to get to. This has a name. This is called the Identical Ancestors Generation. So what happens at this point is either you're related to everyone in the present day or you're related to no one in the present day. And that's always what's going to happen. So if we keep going back, we get to a point with the first common ancestor, and then that kind of increases as we go back and we get to a generation where they're related to everyone. Or at some point, the line died out and they're related to no one. James, it feels like there's one flaw in this argument mm. though. Your dice are very arbitrary and very fair yes whereas you know people like you and me are never going to marry a princess <laughs> yeah so, absolutely so, so there are certain kind of there are certain people above who there's no chance they'll be my parents whereas your dice everyone's yeah. got a chance of being my parent you are absolutely you've, no, you've noticed that problem so this is just uh, to illustrate a point for now and what i'm trying to illustrate here is to show you that there will be a point where we have identical ancestors and also i think it's kind of surprisingly recent. I mean, we only had to go back one, two, three generations to get our most, co our most recent common ancestor. And then I went back another four generations and everyone was related to me. So the point I'm trying to make here is it doesn't take a very long time for us to be all related to the same ancestors. Now you were saying this is not true to life. And I agree, this is not true to life. Because in this example, uh, I'm just as likely to have two parents who are from Paris as to have one parent from Iceland and one parent from Australia, uh, which is not real life at all. Um, there are other problems with this model. We've got a constant population as well. We can talk about that. So it's not a growing population. And also we had this strange problem. We had the virgin birth. It came up a few times. Well. We've got, a, we've got small numbers here. If we were talking about a population of millions, then that means that's not going to happen. So maybe that would be more accurate. Once every 2,000 years, maybe. Yeah, yeah. If we just play with the model first, there was a mathematician from Yale, Joseph Chan, who looked at this model and he came up with a way to estimate when the uh, most common recent ancestor would turn up. And then 
the identical ancestors. So our most recent common ancestor, so the estimate for working out that, he called this TN. So it's the number of generations you need to go back based on the population, which is the N part of this. And he worked it out to B when it's the solution to this formula, two to the power TN equal to N. And if you're familiar with logarithms, that's not too hard then. Uh, if you're happy with that kind of thing, it would be this. Uh, the logarithm to base two of N is the most recent common ancestor generation. Uh, in my example, N was six. It was to the population of six people. Uh, so if I did that, uh, it would be log base two of six, uh, which is 2.58. Uh, so I'm expecting this to happen uh, three generations back. And I think that's exactly what we got in our experiment. Three generations back was the most recent common ancestor. For the identical ancestor generation, Joseph Chang called this UN. And to work that out, it's going to be equal to 1.77 times TN. My example then, I know what TN is, so it's just 1.77 multiplied by that figure I've already got, uh, which is 4.58. So I think I was a bit unlucky with the example I did. I think it happened seven generations back. But it, you can see it was round about right. Now... You know what I'm going to ask you to do? What? Plug in the population of the world. Perfect. Exactly. Now we've talked about the limits of this model, right? So you need... a freedom of movement or freedom to move between social status. So I'm just going to work on something a bit smaller to start with. We'll go up to the world. I'm coming to that. Um, I'm going to work on the population of Europe. And maybe this is going too big itself. But let's say population of Europe. Let's imagine there was free movement in Europe. So... <laughs> yeah, nice timing. <laughs> so what is the population of Europe? I know this. It's um, 740 million. That's the current population. Okay, let's go back to our most recent common ancestor. Well, we just put in that figure. It's going to be uh, 29.5 generations. I used um, the current population of Europe to work that out. That's quite 20, 30 generations. Yeah, 30 generations back. Yeah, I reckon that's about 900,000 years ago. I think we can have a more accurate answer for this because do you remember my model had a, a stable population? It wasn't a growing population. If we want to study a growing population, um, we should use a figure for the population at the time of the most recent common ancestor. That would, that would do it. Um, now, I know it's going to be about a thousand years ago. So now I can sort of use that figure and get a slightly more accurate answer for this. So I'm, I'm going to do that. Go a thousand years back. Um, the population of Europe was about 65 million. So it's log base 2 of 65 million. This is the sort of answer I'm expecting. And that would be about 25.9 generations back. So 26 generations back. Yeah, 900 years ago, something 800 years ago, something like that. And then our identical ancestors. How far do we have to go back? And this means everyone in Europe, oh, you know, there are things you can argue about this. We're doing this for fun. Everyone in Europe would be descended from this generation, from everyone who was alive at this generation, if they survived at all, if their, if their family tree did not die out. So presumably that would include your royals? and Including the royals, exactly. So the royal families survive because we can trace their tree. We can trace their family tree back. So therefore... Any royal family should be related to all of us. Uh, and what generation is that? Um, so it was UN in this system, which was 1.77 times, uh, I'm going to use that figure, kind of 26, isn't it really? 25.9. Uh, and that generation, 45.9. So about 46 generations ago. So I'm thinking that's about 1,300 years ago, something like that. So who was king? 1,300 years ago, it was um, Charles the Great, or Charlemagne, he's also known as, who ruled over what remained of the Roman Empire. And then his kids kind of broke up Europe to become the current royal families of Europe. And we can chase that, trace that family tree down to the current royal family. But that means that everyone who has European ancestry alive in the present day is a direct descendant 
of Charlemagne. Nice. Nice. But not Edward III or whoever you said. Not necessarily Edward III. So if we went back to our most recent common ancestor, well, that's 900 years ago, something like that. Uh, and we don't know who that is. Uh, you know, that could be a peasant or royalty or someone in between. We don't know who that person is. But we do know that there is a point where we're related to everyone about 1,300 years ago. Wouldn't it be great to go back in time and tell that person of their special role? So, well, think of it this way. Play this forwards. Everyone alive today, if their family tree survives, will be related to that generation in 1,000 years' time. Uh, and a direct descendant, or a direct ancestor to that generation. And now, I was talking about Europe there, because just to keep it kind of contained, so you could do this for Asia and Africa, and you'd have the equivalent problem, you'd have the equivalent of a royal family. You asked me about the world, and that becomes more complicated because there's not free movement. And so this is what they did. They broke up the world into continents, into countries, into towns. Uh, they looked at um, historical data, so they could look at the populations based on historical records. Uh, they looked at migration rates from country to country, from continent to continent, and then to see what is uh, the generation that contains our most recent common ancestor, what is the identical ancestor generation. Now, the problem with this model is the migration rates. Um, the populations are historical record. We've got things for that. Um, the migration rates, we don't have figures for that, so you kind of have to guess and see what happened. Our most recent common ancestor could be anywhere from 500 years ago this is for the world, to 3,000 years ago. So somewhere between that. It turns out in their model, that person always came from East Asia, just because of the way East Asia is connected to the rest of the world. And then the identical ancestor population was somewhere between 4,000 years ago and 7,000 years ago, uh, which is relatively recent. If we consider this idea of chasing our family trees back through our mothers or through our fathers, which was this idea of mitochondrial Eve, or Y-chromosome Adam, right? Our most recent ancestor tracing back through our mothers or fathers was about 200,000 years ago. But if you take that uh, restriction away, we're just tracing our family trees back normally, then yes, about 500 or 3,000 years ago, somewhere there, is our most recent common ancestor of the whole world. So if I went back 7,000 years in a time machine, mm -hmm. every single person on the planet either leads to a dead end and has no living ancestors exactly. or is related to me. Exactly right. Uh, in fact, the, the paper that they, they published in Nature, you know, it's, a, you know, it's a maths paper, but then they ended it in this lovely way there's a lovely sentiment at the end of the paper, which I'm just going to read, if you don't mind. No matter the languages we speak or the colours of our skin, we share ancestors who planted rice on the banks of the Yangtze, who first domesticated horses on the steppes of the Ukraine, who hunted giant sloths in the forests of North and South America, and who laboured to build the Great Pyramid of Khufu. Uh, and that's such a beautiful sentiment uh, to end with. So the average number of kids, well, I just add up the values here and divide by six. Nine out of six would be the average. It's greater than one.